Hey everyone, it's Brian here from Massey's Main Entertainment. Uh, we're jumping back in here again this week. We're going to be covering 1992 and our continuing journey of building that perfect album. Um, uh, joining me today is Rich, Rich Strickler. Hello. He has his own channel. I'm going to put a link down below. And joining me always is Doc. Doc, our yes. resident hard rock guy, his challenge this week will to be to put together an album that does not have Guns N' Roses or ACDC. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, it's our continuing series, guys. We've been uh, we're plugging along with this since 1965, building perfect albums, picking 12 songs each year, and uh, and trying to put something really great together. We're also doing tandem videos ever since 1980. And so what we do is on the same night, we're going to actually record the top 10 movies of 1992 as well. That'll go over on Rich's channel. So if you watch uh, one of our videos, uh, make sure you click on the links down in the description for the uh, tandem video for the corresponding music or movies uh also listen to our spotify list if you get a chance we love putting those things together and i noticed they've been they've been actually getting some some likes so some of them i look at and i'm going wow i got like 10 likes on one of these playlists and i'm like where did that come from <laughs> um so it's kind of cool though we put the links to those down below as well and i think it's just it's real fun um 1991 was a huge year you know we had a lot of fun doing that one it was a very important year 92, it doesn't feel like it let up a lot to me, but I'm going to listen to what you guys had to say about 92. So give me your thoughts. Yeah, it's more of the same. It's pretty consistent for me. I plucked a couple of uh, songs that you guys recommended, and the rest I was able to fill in on my own. So I'm still listening to music in 92 to a degree, not as heavy as Doc, maybe not as diverse as Brian, but it's my own niche. And uh, I'm going with it. When you said 1965, it just all of a sudden struck a bell. We've been doing 27 of these now. This is our 27th. That's oh. like, and one a week, that's half a year. We've been plugging away at the Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, on the 92 music scene, um, uh, on a personal level, I don't find it as strong as 91 for me. Um, yeah, there's a pullback on... Um, let's say my hard rock stuff, I would say, you're right. That's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that starts to dwindle it a little. The grunge scene is still there, obviously. And there's some new players that show up and stuff like that. So, and it turns into more of a bluesy kind of feel to me in some senses. I still got the softer side that I still like a lot of that kind of stuff still. So this won't sound as much as a doc side or a doc album, I think, than you're used to. Yeah. Nice. Well, I encourage everybody who's watching <coughs> videos to please uh please uh you know like and comment and uh you know subscribe if you want to especially putting down at least your uh, your top albums as well i always find those things really interesting and uh i i was just a couple guys who who post regularly that i'm like sometimes i'm looking at them going i don't even know half their list <laughs> so i'm like going into spotify listening to songs <laughs> yeah. of before. so that's kind of cool we also have uh, videos, like uh, like you mentioned, uh, from 1965 all the way to now. We have videos up in, uh, yeah, 27 years. That's a long time to be doing these, and we're not going to stop till 1999. So that would be 35 years of music that we cover, and that's a, that's a lot of music. That really is a lot of music. So tonight's order. Uh, Rich, unfortunately, buddy, you got to go first tonight, and then I get to follow you up, and Doc gets to bat a little cleanup here, which means he will absolutely tell us nothing about what he has and while we're talking about our videos. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rich, kick us off, buddy. All right, man. Uh, I thank God that Bruce Springsteen released two albums this year on the same day because I get to get two Springsteen songs. So I'm going to lead it off with uh, off of the uh, Human Touch album, the lead uh, single, the self-titled Human Touch, uh, released the same day in 1992. It's the opening track. It was actually a double side with one of the tracks, Better Days, off of Lucky Town, which I love too. Um, only Roy Bitten and Patty Scalfa of the E Street Band appear. He had a whole new backing band behind him on these two albums. Uh, just a great rock song, a little of that human touch. Great lyrics, as usual, from Bruce. Pretty straightforward. Just an example. I ain't looking for praise or pity. I ain't coming around here searching for a crutch. I just want someone to talk to and a little bit of that human touch. Just a cool little play on words and a uh, big Bruce Springsteen fan. So it had to be on this uh, particular year, even though it's not a great album, like some of his classic 70s stuff, it's still representable of what he was doing in 92. My second track is 
from Soul Asylum, Runaway Train. This was uh, a big hit, number five. Uh, big video from uh, on MTV. These guys are from Minneapolis, Minnesota, I believe. Alt, alt rock, kind of a power ballad. But meaningful lyrics here. Deals with homelessness and runaway kids. Uh, once the video went up, I believe 20-something children returned to their homes, that type of thing. It, it had a big response from kids that were taking the train out of town or the figurative train anyway. They were leaving home and uh, eventually they, they had some happy endings with some of these young runaways. My third tune is from Neil Young, Harvest Moon, title track again, folky, country rock, kind of beautiful song, flawless song. Uh, one of my all-time favorite love songs, in fact. Linda Ronstadt's on the backing vocals on this. Uh, and just, you can visualize, you know, with the moon, there's a full moon rising, let's go dancing in the light. We know where the music's playing, let's go out and feel the night. One of them ambiance songs. When we were strangers, I watched you from afar. When we were lovers, I loved you with all my heart because I'm still in love with you. I want to see you dance again because I'm still in love with you on this harvest moon. And it's got that, in the video, the, the brooms uh, scratching the floor for a little sound effect. It's a, it's a solid song. Right. You know. So that's my third track. <coughs> my fourth track is a kind of an unknown song. It's called Let the Mystery Be by Iris Dement. This is from her self-titled debut album. Uh, she's got that real unusual voice. I don't even know how to describe it. It's very pure, very comforting. Uh, it's Americana. Got a nice fiddle in here with it. And uh, this was the title song of this HBO series, The Leftovers, which I caught a few years ago. And this played over the credits. She's got a cool voice. She does a, a couple of uh, duets with John Prine after this. But this is really a gem of a song. Uh, I want to thank Randy Nelson for reminding me of it because I didn't know it came out in 92. But once I found that out, I added it to my album. Uh, my fifth track is Everybody Hurts from R.E.M. Automatic for the People. Uh, we did an R.E.M. top 10 not long ago. And this was my favorite song uh, by them uh, from that album, by the way. Powerful song, moving vocal here by Michael Stipe. Uh, instrumentally, it's note perfect, you know, uh, anti-suicide, don't give up, hold on, that refrain, hold on, you know, uh, everybody hurts sometime, it's sort of a galvanizing tune, everybody goes through problems, you've got to get through it, and my uh, closer on side A here is Eric Clapton's Tears of Heaven, another heartbreaker, uh, about his four-year-old son who <coughs> That's right. Fortunately, fell out of the high rise building and to his death. Mm -hmm. uh, he does a version of it on Unplugged, which was massive. It appears in the Rush soundtrack, which was one of my movies from 91. Just an absolute heartbreaker. Uh, and he's using little terms like, Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Very, uh, it, it gets you in the heart. Uh, I must be strong to carry on. I mean, how do you carry on after losing a child like that? But. <laughs> You know, you don't know till it happens to you how, how you can get the strength to do it. So that'll end my song, my uh, side A. It's all side A, buddy. That is solid. I'm, yep. I remember the unplugged uh, Eric Clapton that had that oh, yeah. version of that song, very powerful um, when it came out. Uh, I got two. I got two matches from that wow. side, and I also really like the Iris uh dement one i mean she had a song also featured on <coughs> the uh, end credits for uh the remake of true grit by the cohen brothers waiting on waiting on your everlasting arms that was iris dement i mean that's that's how yeah. great voice great unbelievable voice. yeah yeah and totally unique once you hear that you know that's her it's like that's one of a kind yeah yeah absolutely all right now on side two a little bit different more of the uh the new stuff that was coming out in 92. I'm going to kick it off with the Stone Temple Pilots plush. This is a, uh, a heavy, heavy sound, of course. Grunge, <coughs> 90s anthem, Scott Weiland on the vocals. It's got killer drums, uh, great guitar as well. One of the more mem memorable grunge songs for me. It's just got, where will you be tomorrow? It's got that great, great voice. Good video as well. My second track is a... Uh, a one-hit wonder, No Rain from Blind Melon from their debut album. 
that's Shannon Hoon, the lead singer who died a couple years later, suicide, I believe, 1995, he died. Oh, they only had the, uh, I believe this is the only album they had. I could be mistaken. Kind of an odd song. It's got that little girl with the bumblebee outfit on the video. Uh, totally. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's kind of a happy song. I, it's about finding happiness in life and kind of a laid back groove. All I can do is, you know, I can't even sing it, but you know what I mean. It's kind of a fun song. My third track is from Four Non Blondes. What's up? Hey, what's going on? This is all girl group. Uh, lead singer Linda Perry, very soulful voice, catchy song. This is their one and only studio album. So the four non blondes are the ones that had the one album, and then they were they broke up. They couldn't get along uh, within the band. My <coughs> fourth, my fourth track is from the Cranberries, Dreams. Thank you, Brian. This was a great recommendation. Dolores O'Riordan on the uh, vocals. She's got a real angelic voice. I, I watched the video several times here. Irish band, uh, debut single. Uh, it's kind of a bouncy kind of song. It's light and airy and bouncy, and it's about first love, breezy type, type of, type of uh, lyric. Oh, my life is changing every day in every possible way. And it's just the way she sings it. It's really uh, very likable and pleasing to the ear. Uh, my fifth track is from the tragically hip Wheat Kings. That's the song I like best off that fully completely album, believe it or Fantastic. not. Fantastic. Wow. And I had to put it on. I I remember when you guys did the Tragically Hit maybe a year ago on reaction to the classics, and you sent me a couple of samples. And I remember liking this then. I still like it now. Uh, it's a song about a Canadian man who's served 23 years in prison and for something he didn't commit. Great storytelling here. Uh, weak kings and pretty things. Let's just see what tomorrow brings. That's that refrain that comes through. Uh, a band that's huge in Canada, but never really took off in the U.S. So thanks to you guys, I got to, to sample that. I really like the song. And my ending track on uh, side two is back to Bruce Springsteen from Lucky Town. If I Should Fall Behind, love song, a ballad uh, written by Bruce for his wife, Patty, taking the journey through life with one person and dealing with the struggles and the ups and downs, all that stuff. The relationships are tested with. And you know, if I should fall behind, uh, we said we'd walk together, come what may. Though come the twilight, we should lose our way. And as if we're walking, a hand should slip free. I'll wait for you. And should I fall behind, wait for me. I just love that sentiment. And a uh, great song by Bruce. So that's how I'm going to end 1992. Excellent. Wow. I'm really one. I was like, really oh, man. You had Stone Temple Pilots. And then. Then I was really pleasantly surprised that you had the tragically hip and Wheat Kings at, at that, which is one of my favorite songs by them. So yeah, and the Cranberries, yeah. don't forget them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, Jill, is a good one man, too. Man, when they said she passed away, that's kind of a heartbreaker because her voice was like, oh, yeah, man. yeah, oh, beautiful voice, Perfect man. Voice. Yep, it's a fantastic album, Rich. I Thanks. Love it. Thanks. Yeah. I, I wrote a like it too. I, I thought I'd have problems in the beginning, and I'm putting it together and going. This isn't half bad. I would listen to this. So. <laughs> I hope so. You <laughs> should, man. That's good music, man. That's good music. Yeah. All right. Well, I, we, we hit on one more on that side, so I'll just get started with mine, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm going to kick my album off with uh, from Pablo Honey. I'm going to use Creep from Radiohead. Um, I'm going to have uh, several tracks probably from Radiohead over the next couple of years. Uh, this is a track, obviously, that kind of put them on the map as far as popularity goes, even though it's not a song that Tom York is very mm -hmm. fond of, obviously, because, you know, he felt like he was forced to play this, you know, early on in their career way too much. It was a song that he didn't even want uh, to even be on the album. I think what had happened, the producer and, and the studio was listening to them play this, like just horsing around in the studio, and he started to press record and he recorded the whole thing. So then what they did was, it's because it was so melancholy, John, Johnny Greenwood went back and threw down that crazy guitar uh, riff that's actually in there when they go into the chorus and they go, dun, 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 dun. yeah, he added all that later on so they would have some type of edge to it. Um, but it was never meant to be on Pablo, uh, not a fan, uh, it's not a, a fan favorite of the band, I'm going to say anyway, the band really didn't like the track, but it put them on the map. I still like the song, I wanted to put it on here. 
Uh, number two for me, I've got Alice in Chains uh, from Dirt. I've got Wood. Um, I think it's an incredible track. Lane, Lane Staley's voice is really powerful in this. Great guitar work. Song was also featured on the single soundtrack, which was a soundtrack that featured um, almost all grunge bands yeah. um, uh, on it as well. Great, uh, it's a great soundtrack. This is my favorite song off of Dirt, and Dirt's my favorite album from Alice in Chains. I wanted to include it. Uh, number three for me, I've got Rage Against the Machine from their debut album. I've got Freedom. Uh, talk about a, you know, a politically driven band uh, featuring the vocals, which is kind of a rap singing style of Zach Della Roca and Tom Morello, who I think is maybe the most innovative guitarist in the last 20 years. You know, I know that every, every once in a while you'll see him, you know, on tour, actually, he'll go out and play with Bruce Springsteen a little bit. Yeah. They'll do Ghost of Tom Joe together. Yeah. Uh, just an incredible guitar player. Uh, some lyrics that kind of uh, stuck out to me um, from uh, this particular song. Uh, it's set up like a deck of cards. They're sending us to early graves for all the diamonds. They use a pair of clubs to beat the spades. Um, just to show you how they play on words yeah. uh, to, and get across this political message. Um, and, and Rage has just always been like that. And I've always enjoyed their albums. Uh, number four for me, I've got uh, Soul Asylum's Runaway Train, uh, like like Rich said, powerful song, um, just kind of a mega, kind of an amalgamate of being a little bit of a ditty, a little bit of a rock song. Yeah, I like the music video where they just alternate the kids that are missing on the milk cartons. There's yeah. always a different, always a different set of kids in these music videos, and and as kids were found, they would definitely replace them in the music in the, video. In the video. Too, which I thought was a really cool concept that they did. And it's a great song. It's, it's it's very cool. Number five, we have another hit between me and Rich. Uh, we got I got Wheat Kings as well. Oh, Even wow. though it wasn't technically released as a single from Fully Completely, I feel like it's the the best song on the uh, on that album. And maybe one of my I got to think it's in my top two or three favorite songs of all time by the Tragically Hip. Uh, Rich touched upon the message a little bit. They have a they they have a lot of songs actually that touch upon people who went to jail. For the, for the wrong reasons or, or for reasons that are not valid at all. Uh, Gord was always very uh, political about those types of things. And ending my side one, another uh, hit with Rich, which I think might be a trifecta for us. Uh, I picked Everybody Hurts here. Um, there'll be another REM song that I'll, that I'll chart in 1993. In album, <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't released until 1993 as a single so I'll hold off on that one. But Everybody Hurts is such a powerful song. Uh, yes. Michael Stipe's unique vocals really kind of come through with this. And the song is elevated to a, another level with John Paul Jones using the string arrangement right. um, to, make, to make it what it is. And I just I felt like this is an all-time classic R.E.M. song. Had to be included in my 93 album. So that's side one. That is fantastic. I love it. Fantastic, brother. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. But it's good that it is good we get some hits on that one because all those are all hits on that side because we're not hitting on anything in the second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's uh that was a pretty impressive side, I'll say that. Yeah. 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 Uh so going on to side two. Um, this is where it gets, I don't know, you guys are gonna have to like listen to these songs yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'll explain. I got a. Uh, I got uh, from the band Cracker from their debut album. I got Teen Angst. I don't know if you've heard any of the songs by Cracker bef uh, before. Uh, it's a former frontman from uh, Camper Van Beethoven. He makes it. He has this band that he creates in the early '90s. Uh, teen in this song, Teen Angst is the leadoff track from it. A very good rock song if you listen to it. Uh, but one of the great lyrics in it is he goes. But what the world needs now is another folk singer, like I need a hole in my head. And it just, I like it because it's like an ironic rock song. I mean, he sings it so very seriously, but everything about the song is just ironic. And, you know, he's just making fun of the music scene is what he's doing. Wow. And it's fantastic. So uh, the second song I have is Sway from the band Spiritualize, which is kind of an electronica band uh, that I got into in the last couple of years. Uh, very minimalist type of music, um, very minimalist lyrics, but the music is just is, is so soothing to me. I wanted to include a song from, it, it's from their album called Laser Guided Me Melodies, uh, very highly rated and acclaimed album. 
Uh, and it did a lot for electronic music as it would it will progress in the uh, late 90s. Um, number three, I've got Tori Amos from her album Little Earthquakes. I've got Crucify. Um, Big song. This album, when it, yeah, man, th- when this album came out, absolutely blew me away. The re- record executives were pushing it really hard. It wasn't hard to love this album. One of the few times I can remember a, an album that was purely piano driven having such an impact in, on, on modern rock music. And uh, it's just because of her lyrics. Um, every, every song that Tori had on this album was just like something that was coming from part of her soul. Was, she was just laying out there for everybody. Um, if anybody knows the story between her and Neil Gaiman, Neil Gaiman and her are like best friends. And Neil Gaiman actually based a character from, from his comic book a delirium, he based it on actually the look of Tori Amos because of her frizzy hair. It was kind of interesting. Um, number four, I've got I've got Dr. Dre, nothing but a G thing. Uh, the Chronic is probably one of the top five albums, you know, for hip hop of all time. Um, if one thing NWA has, you know, I disagree. I actually disagreed with NWA making the Hall of Fame because I didn't think they had enough catalog they only had two albums but i think that the individuals that came from nwa have a catalog that could definitely warrant them as individuals making it in but i don't i'm I'm not sure whether that's going to ever happen or not but nothing but a g thing i mean if anybody knows those some of those songs that came out in that era that album also introduces snoop doggy dog to the world i remember the video that had him in it where you know had the father from friday that was playing his actual dad in it and he said, you, he said, your name's Snoop Doggy Dog. You need to go out and get yourself a jobby job. <laughs> that was just hilarious. Um, number five for me, I've got from Ice Cube uh, from his uh, album, The Predator. I've got Check Yourself, um, which is, you know, if you listen to the lyrics of it, it's basically saying, hey, listen, you know, young man, you better check yourself in the real world out there. You're going to end up in jail. And he starts to describe some of the things that can happen to you in jail. And uh, some of those things aren't very nice things that can happen to you in jail, you know, and on a lot of different levels. Um, and I won't go into some of the lyrics, but one of those things that involves putting something, putting something in places that you don't want it to be. And uh, uh, but I wanted to include this song. I love the sampling on it. They use the sampling from uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five's message as the the, the sample track. And closing it out, I wanted to put this, uh, a song that's like near and dear to. Me and my wife's heart. It's like our our song. If we were to have an actual song, I've got "I Die Without You" uh, from PM Dawn. It's a song that was featured on the Boomerang soundtrack with Eddie Murphy. Um, uh, but it's one of those songs that every time we always associated it with us as a couple. Whenever it, it comes on, and I wanted to include it here as a kind of little nod to my wife for putting up with me recording videos <laughs> like this at least every week. So I'm just uh. Send out a little bit of love to my wife. That's all I'm doing, fellas, closing out the side. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you were right. I don't think we hit on anything there, right? I was going to say, you're right on that second side there, brother. uh, I got my jaw hanging on the ground. I don't know any of their songs. (laughs) (laughs) Although I did listen to Crucify. Obviously, I do know a few. Yeah. I listened to Crucify, but uh, it didn't make my list. Yeah. Yeah, Crucify is a good song. And, yeah, I like uh, that album. Little Earthquakes was a really good album at the time. Yeah. And uh, say, so who, who sings Teen Angst again? Who sings Cracker. That one? Check them yeah, out. Yeah, I, I know the song. I know the song, yeah. actually. Yeah. In fact, I listened to it maybe a couple weeks ago. It's kind of oh, funny. That's a, yeah, you got that whole album is just hilarious. Yeah. There's another, there's another song called I See the Light. And they'll you know, say, you know, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Someone please tell me this is not a train. You know, <laughs> I mean, all of his, all of his songs on there are just hilarious, but. He's trying to do it serious, but his lyrics just are like wild and comedic, and it, it's great. I love it. So, ninety-two man, that's a ninety-twoer. That's ninety-two. Doc, listen, uh, out of all three albums that we're going to do, like Rich and me and you and stuff, yours might be the most diverse because it probably covers everything that actually did happen in ninety-two. <laughs> I'll say that for sure. Yeah. So, that, uh, okay, yeah. Kudos for you on that, brother. Because that's that's pretty. That's a big spectrum, man. I'm, I'm still in my lane kind of thing and veer off once in a while maybe that's it, but you get the idea right. man I wonder how we're going to do here boys this will be pretty funny eh? it's up to you man <sighs> 92 I'm kicking off with Allison Chains buddy but um, I've got Rooster 
coming in. Uh, oh. yeah. Can I tell you, man, I just, um, there are a couple of good tunes off this album, you're right, mm-hmm. that stand out. Absolutely. And I think we just probably hit both of them that are really the top tier. Yeah, Rooster's a great grunge. Uh, it's got a great build up in it, you know, just about the, one of the guys in the band. Rooster's, you know, Vietnam War for this guy's dad that he wrote about. His nickname was the Rooster, man. Here comes the Rooster. It's got a great riff in it, too, man. So this is one of the first Alice in Chain songs that I actually remember before <laughs> um, Man in the Box, right? So it's uh, yeah. um, Rooster was a big hit, man. And uh, still a great grunge rock song from 92 in my eyes. So. I've got the Black Crow's Remedy coming in right behind that. Okay. Um, not much I can pull from this album in one sense. Uh, there's there's a couple of things that stand like Black Crow's to me and stuff like this. Remedy is a really cool bluesy Black Crow sounding song, man. This is a you know, he moves like he moves like Jagger, but let me tell you, man, this guy it, it's it sounds like it's it's got that bluesy Southern. Yeah. rock vibe that the black crows have man and it's a that's a really good rock tune man for that kind of feel it's a great song and uh, i'm gonna marry up one here with rich right away so um, i have what's up too rich from four non blondes cool man yeah yeah i love linda perry's voice in this man yeah. I, I can't get around it this is uh one of the ultimate pop rock songs of, of 92, man. Catchy as hell. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah you can sing it. Oh, and I'm not going to do it. So. Yeah. Um, they, they also do a cover of uh, uh, Missy Mountain Hop as a dedication oh, get to out. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Actually, that Just is Check true. that out. Yes. They do a good job. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. And she went on. She had a great career writing for a whole bunch of other people and stuff like that. And then Perry did. Yeah. So um, still involved in the music industry. But that that song, you know, was, the the video is one thing to look at, and the other thing. But man, that song is really catchy. It is. So this next one, Rich. So I also have no rain from Blind Melon coming oh, in. Oh man, back to back, back, same thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame this guy died. You know, he OD. You're right. You know, they, they did have two albums. That's what they okay. had, Rich. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. no rain off the first one they were out touring blah 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 and then you know the OD thing happens here and he's still a young guy too but yeah. what a unique voice and I wasn't like the, the biggest fan of that too when it actually kind of came out you know kind of you know, it's catchy and stuff like that you know in the B video and stuff that's how I knew it you know from MTV and stuff but that's how you know the song it, it, it's one of those ones man it's in your head there goes 24 hours of your life man because you're, you're singing that song you know in your head you're doing it both right now. I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> That's the I way know. it is. It's true. Catchy as hell, but yeah, and it's got a good flow to it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nothing. Uh, it's a simple song, and you know how I like those. I've got Melissa Etheridge coming in after that, boys, with "Ain't It Heavy," right at number five. You guys know I like Melissa now, I guess. Right? Yeah, so, I think uh, so. By now, one of your favorites. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like her music here, and she'll appear again. So I can tell you that too. So, um, but this is a—it's a classic uh, guitar, acoustic-driven rock song from Melissa Etheridge. Right? She writes really good songs. When she catches on them, she's got some really good hooks, really good catchy, good yeah. vibes, really good lyrics. Man, it's deeper than you think. Um, anybody who can play with Bruce Springsteen more than a couple of times on stage, buddy, kind of basis in my books. Yeah. But I started pretty heavy, so I'm going to end it out pretty heavy too. So I would have thought for sure I would have hit with Brian on this, but I actually hit with Rich. So I have plush from oh, Stone Temple Wow. <laughs> I'm on my that. side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, his voice is. Yeah, it's a great video. You're right. The guitar riff in it. Yeah, everything you touched on there before, Rich, is kind of bang on. That guitar riff, it's a heavy guitar riff, but yeah. it's not too fast or anything like that. It's yeah. kind of like a, it slows it down a tad tempo and stuff. Sounds fantastic. It's a great Stone Temple too, man. And they got a few. So, yeah. yeah. Ears out for them in the future, I'd say as well, because I like some of that stuff. And that's going to end my side A. I can't believe we had three on there, and all mine were on side two. All yours on side one. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Shocking. Look at that there, Brian. So I mean I I I 
I don't feel bad that we missed on Alice in Chains because you know they're both great songs. Both I'm great like, tunes there, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And the No Rain one, yeah, I think that song was, you know, it's weird is that his voice cracks, but that's what makes it so memorable. Yeah, like, his voice is always cracking in it. And uh, I remember reading somewhere that the song was about codependency, I think uh, that, inability yeah. to function without you know being in a relationship or being around people. Um, oh, really? It was really interesting. And then when his suicide definitely must have added an, a new dimension to that. Maybe there was a degree of loneliness that people just yeah. weren't aware of, you know? Yeah, doing a little bit more of a deeper dive on the band. They actually had some pretty good little tunes out there, man. Another one called Changes or something like that. Yeah. Really cool tune. Um, right. So yeah, they just never obviously had a chance to take off. But yeah, that song was catchy as hell. Yeah, I, I feel the same way that you do a little bit about it, Doc. It, when, I, when it was out, I wasn't a big fan, but. When you look back on it now, it's catchy and it it works for that year, and that's why it made my list. Sure does, yeah, yeah. I guess if I start off side B, then I think we all might have had this one to start off. I got REMs. Everybody hurts coming in that number one. I, so. There we go. Yeah, all timer. Yeah, uh, this is. Uh, uh, I like I like uh, quite a few REM tunes, man. This is right up at the top for me, man. This is. This may be their best tune, man. man. This album's solid, obviously. This, this has a lot of songs you can take from here. You can have a real heavy, heavy four or five that you can put into the mix right here if you want to drop an REM song in, in 92. Um, Everybody Hurts is just a classic, and the right Stipe sounds fantastic, man, and it's it's the flow in his voice that makes this song so, I don't know, almost emotional in one sense. So, it is, yeah. Yeah. I come in with Springsteen's Human Touch right after that, too. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. What a great tune. It's just a great tune. It's uh, more of the, the vibey of uh, a classic Springsteen to me, man, in that yeah. one sense. Uh, out of the two albums that he released that year, this is my favorite off of either one. Right. And this is my favorite that I've seen from Bruce in a while, in, to me. Um, this yeah. is more like old school writing, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, yeah, it's the Mercada and storytelling from Bruce that that I like. So uh, definitely makes my album the '92 man. Uh, I, I didn't know why I was going to have this in here, but I do, and I, I love the song. So I've got not enough time from In Excess coming in at number three. Hmm. Um, didn't get much airplay. Uh, I got a couple on here that you guys might not even know. So whatever the case, but. Um, not enough time is uh, it's almost like a cross between I don't know, Prince and George Michael and you two all wrapped into in excess. That's what I would say. Mm. It's got everything that that vibe, the sound. Hutchinson sounds great, it's very melodic and sounding. It's a soft balladish kind of song, but it's still got that in excess vibe. And so, you know, what you when you hear it, especially when you get to the chorus, you're going, Frig man, that's in excess. And maybe Which I can see why Doc from, thinks it. Is that uh, X? Say? Is that on X? I think it is. That's the third one in after kick, right? That's the second one after kick? Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. So, there's a couple of good songs on there. They should, this, to be honest with you, if I was to look back at it now in this song, I mean, I don't want to harp on it too long here, but Not Enough Time should have been a hit. It, mm. it easily could have been a hit. Um, and I, I've always liked the song. So I'm happy I went back and revisit these things that... Uh, <laughs> This, this one was on my short list right away, to be honest with you. Yeah. I also have Soul Asylum, Soul Runaway Train coming in right uh, behind that guy. Wow. Two. Two tracks. Yeah. That's yeah, a great song. It's another great, catchy, hooky song from obviously 92. This has a lot of meaning behind it, and there's a lot of good that came out of the song. But it's mm-hmm. still a great song. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's another one of those ones, man. You can hear it in your head, you know. You can hear the twang of the guitar. <laughs> Run away, train. You just start going, and then before you know it, you're off, right? So, yeah, um, it's catchy. Still is catchy, and uh, you know, gotta give kudos where it's done, man. <laughs> yeah. Thirty years later, it's, a, it's still a catchy song. It's a catchy song. It's a good song. So, I'm, I'm, I think all three of us had that, right? So that's that's right. That's it's right. Yeah. yeah. So is Wheat Kings right after that, eh, boys? Yeah, all <laughs> oh, right. All right, loading up. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I like a lot of hip 
and I'm the Canadian boy on here, but Brian knows how I feel and Rich, uh, you'll get into exploring it a little bit more. I think you'll find out what me and Brian are talking about, but I'm, I'm happy you're on board at least. And this one stuck with you because it's a fantastic yeah. song. Yeah. yeah. Lots of great songs. And, uh, some of the albums you give a couple of listens to, you're going to find out that there's a whole bunch of really good songs from these guys. And Weep Kings is right, you know, as a personal level to me, right at the top almost, man. This is fantastic storytelling, songwriting. Um, this is this is what I want in my music sometimes, man. And when I want this, this is the stuff I want. This is the really good stuff. I'm going to end on a personal, so... A lot of crap for Roger Waters out there, but I don't care. I love Roger Waters. So, yeah. Ooh, I know what it is. What's go, that? Ahead. go ahead. I think I know what it is, but go ahead. Yeah. So, Amused to Death comes out for Roger Waters, the album. Uh, to me, I would say this is probably the hidden gem of the 90s. This is my take. I, this is a top 10 or album of the 90s for me. Um, lots of good songs, you know, What God Wants and you know, Perfect Sense. If you listen to those two, a couple back to back. I'm taking the title track, I'm used to death, man. Um, I love this song. Um, I play this song, you know, once every three or four weeks just to listen to it, man, because I just want to hear it. I, I love this song. Um, yeah. Very Floydish, obviously, because Roger's involved. And it's a continuation. I'd say it's, uh, like I said, man, I'm used to death. The album's kind of like an under... Nobody talks about it, man. It's not talked completely, about. It's, completely under the radar. It, under the radar. Yeah, and what I think God it's a Wants is a great rock song, too. And that's, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Jeff Beck sounds awesome on guitar on that, on that song, man. That's Jeff Beck's your lead guitarist for a tune, man. You got to give that a listen. So that's what I can tell you. So uh, I'm used to death. It's got fantastic buildup. It's a long, perfect, Floydish kind of song by Roger. I love it. It's going to end my 92. Perfect. Wow. We had seven out of 12. That's, I think, the most I've ever had with anybody. <laughs> On any year. <laughs> On any year. Seven songs the same. That's incredible. And in the, in the 90s, I can't believe that. Yeah, I can't believe we had three trifectas. But here's the kicker. Is that one of those trifectas, I guarantee 75% of everybody who's watching our videos is going to go, <laughs> I got to go look up that damn song. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be like, I never heard of the song. They're not yeah, even going to know the song. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. that's awesome doc yeah great list thank you really strong i have to say it's strong because it's almost the same as my album <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you gotta say it's pretty strong right? you got no choice brother <laughs> i know you got seven hits and you left off uh, harvest moon tears of heaven <laughs> you've still got seven and you know what? I'm not going to say the wrong thing here. So uh, I'll say, you know, Pablo Honey comes out in 93. That's all I'll say for that right now. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Dreams was my last cut. That's a cool song. I like Dreams. Cranberry's That's Dreams. Cool. That's my last cut. I wow. love that song. Her voice is hypnotic, oh man. God. I, I, That's the last song I listened to before uh, I London. I just wanted to have that. Uh, okay. that, that voice. A voice like that, and she's Irish, and I left her off my list. I should really probably take one yeah. in the head for that, man. That's, that's he has cool. a, a solo song, too, for the... Remember the movie The Devil's Own with Harrison Ford? Yeah. Sure. And he sung, uh, Brad he Pitt. sung a song at the beginning of it called God Be With You, Ireland. Oh, oh really? Beautiful. That's her. And I'm like, wow. Holy. Dolores had uh, some chops, man. Yeah. I'm Sounds right. like that might have been the best part of that movie. It may have been the best part of that, <laughs> that movie. That movie blew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and literally, in almost every part of that movie. And that didn't count any of the explosives. Uh. <laughs> so, any, <laughs> the uh, another song too from uh, Soul Asylum that was on that album, Black Gold, you should check out as well. I love Black Gold; it's a really good song um, to check out. But and then I had like four songs by REM. Yeah, I could have put on there. Yeah. That's Other than everybody hurts off that album for sure. Yeah, definitely. easy. That, that's what sucks is when we're limited to one that you really have to pluck the gem out because there's five or six of them. You know, it's tough. Yeah, true enough. But still, it's. Uh, but I think we actually covered off ninety two pretty good, boys. That was pretty I think cool. So too. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Well, all right. That that concludes nineteen ninety two. We actually got three trifectas out of the deal. I don't think we can argue with that. Never saw it. Uh, Make sure you guys check out our Spotify list down below, which will have links to uh, you know all of our playlists, and you can play those songs, especially the songs that maybe you've never heard of. Check those out. Check out our videos from 1965 all the way through 
1991 as well. Please like, uh, sub, and comment down below. We really appreciate it. And also check out Rich's uh, movie uh, Top 10 from 1992 as well in the links down below. So, Rich, thank you for joining us. Thanks I really lot. appreciate it. That's Rich Strickler, everybody. Doc, Doc, thanks for joining us. You got everybody it, brother. Take Everybody take care out there. We'll see you next week-ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs>